continue being with Ukraine to help rebuild what was destroyed. Thank you. Thank you, President. The floor now goes to our first honorary member, Vitaly Klitschko, Mayor of Kiev. Uh, speaking, you may speak, of course, in Ukrainian or in English. Uh, uh, dear members of European Committee, dear President of uh, European Committee of Region, thank you very much. It's uh, actually to repeat your words. We Ukrainian actually uh, European country geographically, with our mentality, we European, we European uh, with our history. But it's very important to implement European uh, quality of life, European rules, and European values we're fighting for right now in Ukraine. And uh, it's not easy fight, but we're ready. We're ready. Today we discuss. Uh, uh, I, I uh, listened to the old speech, uh, old speech of uh, uh, my colleagues. Uh, many uh, colleagues what told is uh, actually Ukrainian army destroyed the mythos regarding the biggest and strongest army in the world, the Russian's army. I can explain uh, why it happens. Uh, the Russians have much more soldier, much more equipment, um, much more potential, but uh, it's everyone have to understand. The soldiers in the war, they die. The Russian soldier coming to Ukraine for the money they pay. And we defending our families and our children. And I hope everyone, they understand, died for the money and di or died for, the, for you children, for the future of your children. And we, I want to repeat, we see future of our country of our children as European country, where human rights have a priority, where we have press freedom, where we have the democratic standards. It's our fight. Not easy fight. I don't know, I'm a little, little bit depressed because um, to be honest, I didn't see the light and end of the tunnel. I don't know how long will be this fight. I know, I'm more than sure we win this fight, but I don't know, it's nobody knows in the world how long will be this fight. Weeks, months, I hope not years. And how many Ukrainian people have to pay huge price his life for the freedom. And one more time, thank you for everyone, for your friendship, for your participation, for your help, and for your support. It's very important for us because we're fighting not just for our home country, for our children. We're fighting for every one of you because we defend the same values what we have. We defend our future because we don't know how far Russian ambition, Imperial, uh, empire ambition have. It's board of Donetsk, Lugansk is not. We right now see it's board of Poland. It's, uh, I, I'm doubt uh, so many voices right, right, right now in Russia about Baltic countries. Maybe it's the board of Slovakia, maybe it's board of Czech, Czech Republic, maybe it's board of Germany. Maybe they have crazy idea to rebuild the air because the president of Russian Federation spent a lot of time as spy agent in uh, former dead air. We are fighting for same values and we're fighting for every one of you. And thank you, thank you very much for everyone who support Ukraine, who give the help. And especially for our children, I told today is 15,000 Ukrainian children in this summer uh, spent uh, four or five weeks in uh, in Europe in uh, with other children and uh, relaxes. It's it's difficult. It's difficult to say. One small story about children. 
it's uh, I guess it's interesting to listen uh, to listen uh, this story. Uh, I coming to our train station where evacuated the people from Bucha Gastonia, which the city is totally destroyed. One small child, I guess, six or seven years old, crying. I come to him and told everything will be good and uh, don't cry, please. And he asked for parents, mama, papa, of his mom or dad. Uh, the person who followed this child told, told me, the child don't know. He's already alone. The parents is died. Thank you for support of our children. We never forget your help. And we see right now who are real friends of Ukraine. And one more time, thank you from deep my heart. Uh, for, for your help. It's very important for us. And we know without your help and without your support, we can't survive. And we still fighting. And I'm more than sure we win because we're fighting for our children, for future of our families, of our kids. Um, <clears throat> thank you one more time. Thank you for this moving intervention. The final opening statement is from uh, the Chair Yarova Lutsenko of the Kharkiv Regional Council. You have the floor. Sorry. Повторю. Я хочу подякувати в першу чергу президенту. Є? Окей? Окей? Європейського комітету регіонів. Тому що то, як він задав темп і його... Sorry to intervene. We aren't just quite getting the interpretation. Could we have a technical check? This was all verified. Perhaps if we could ask you just to begin again, Chairwoman. Sorry for that. Thank you. Першу чергу я хочу подякувати президенту Європейського комітету регіонів, тому що він сьогодні задав такий темп і на засіданні зранку, і на сесії. І члени комітету регіонів, я бачила, що вони підтримують президента, вони підтримують Україну, і для нас це дуже важливо. І сьогодні була нарада під головуванням президента України, на якій був виступ президента Комітету європейських регіонів з приводу підтримки України. Люди, українці, вже давно вибрали курс, курс європейський, з якого їх намагаються збивати, намагаються нав'язати інші погляди, але це точно не вдасться країні-агресору. Сьогодні я говорила вже не одноразово, вже хочу повторитися, тому що мої колеги, представники органи місцевого самоврядування з України, мери наші, вони дуже важко працюють для того, щоб наші люди, громадяни України могли жити в тих регіонах, в тих містах, де немає бойових дій. Це я змогла приїхати, але два дні тому я була саме в Харкові. Наші чоловіки не виїжджають з України, як і президент Володимир Зеленський. Вони працюють цілодобово. Що стосується підтримки комітету, то ми кажемо відверто, це дійсно важливо для нашої країни. 
це дійсно важливо для українців, тому що Україна – це європейська країна, і Україна – дружня країна, яка хоче бути разом з Європою. Я сьогодні говорила з приводу співпраці і підтримки органів місцевого самоврядування на регіональних рівнях. І пан президент також, він це перше, він виступав з приводу цього, озвучив, що це є дуже важливо вже сьогодні починати активно налагоджувати, вже багато в кого вона вже є, співпраця на регіональному рівні. Щоб органи місцевого самоврядування, мери, голови обласних рад, всіх країн дружніх, спілкувалися між собою з приводу необхідної допомоги, з приводу необхідної допомоги після закінчення війни для відновлення наших регіонів. Тому я вважаю, що сьогодні ми дуже плідно попрацювали точно для нашої України, для нашої країни. Тому що якщо комітет регіонів європейський активно запустить, скажімо, цю ініціативу, яка вже в деяких регіонах є з приводу співпраці і допомоги. Я думаю і впевнена, що нашим мерам, нашим містам буде набагато легше і буде набагато зрозуміліше саме, яке місто, який регіон європейської країни допомагає, допомагає гуманітарною допомогою, допомагає відновленням, на майбутнє, я думаю, що на найскорше майбутнє. Я слухала тільки що пана Кличко, і він правду сказав, що ми не розуміємо, коли це завершиться. Але жодної, жодного метра нашої території ніхто не готовий здавати. Всі стали як стіна, всі українці об'єдналися і почали боротися з ворогом. Кожен на своєму фронті. Хтось на дипломатичному, хтось в Збройні Силах України. Кожного свій фронт. Гуманітарка, волонтери і так далі. І сьогодні, як ніколи, Україна єдина. І ми завдячуємо європейським партнерам і регіональному комітету Європи, що ви підтримуєте наші, наші регіони, що ви підтримуєте нашу державу і що ви розумієте, на тому, розумієте чітко, що сьогодні не спецоперація, а сьогодні реальна жорстка війна, в якій гинуть сотнями люди, діти. І ніхто не може цього вже приховати, навіть якщо буде намагатися. Тому я дякую за підтримку і за сьогоднішню сесію, і за підтримку всіх членів Комітету Європейського регіону і президента Європейського комітету регіонів. Дякую. Thank you very much, uh, Chairwoman. Uh, we will now take questions from journalists. Um, I propose to take the first question from inside the room, and then the second question would come from our online audience. So uh, we have the first question from uh, the Polish press. Um, please indicate your name and uh, which of our guests you're addressing. Uh, Mateusz Klicka from Polish Press Agency. Uh, I've got a question to Mr. Klitschko uh, in the, uh, about information that deeply shocked me today. Uh, in the first two weeks of April, 400 Russian rapes of children and adults were reported to helplines. What is uh, the reaction of Ukrainians to those uh, horrible events? Is it fear? Is it uh, hatred towards the occupant? What do you th think about that? And if I may, uh, second question, uh, what does your work as a local government official look like now? What is everyday life uh, like in Kiev? Can you go to restaurant, have a coffee to take break from those, those horrors? And uh, one more question to Mr. President. Uh, I wanted to ask you about this, uh, uh, about this uh, energy crisis, but you already mentioned that. So I will ask you about what, what are the plans of Committee of the Regions uh, further support of uh, Ukraine? Thank you. Thanks. So uh, one question for Mayor Klitschko, to whom I give the floor, and then afterwards a question for our president. Mayor Klitschko, 
to have the floor on the energy question. Uh, I want to... This voice will listen from morning to evening. It means everyone have to go to bunkers and uh, save his lives. It's we as managers responsible for lives of the people is the main priority and also responsible for services, what we have to uh, give. Uh, before the war and population in our hometown in capital of Ukraine was 3.5 million people. And uh, the uh, majority of the people are equate to safety part of Ukraine and uh, also outside of Ukraine. Right now, the people slowly coming back and uh, life coming back in Kyiv. But we have not forget it's uh, the satellite city, Bucha, Irpeng, Gastomel, Borodyanka is totally destroyed. And right now we help to this satellite city, uh, giving them so much help and to rebuild uh, the apartments, uh, the buildings, which uh, apartment buildings, which totally destroyed. And uh, right now our priority, I have a, uh, I have a feeling it's uh, morning, evening, morning, evening is nonstop uh, already two months, uh, but our pr uh, priority right now to give services to the people, electricity, water, um, uh, heating, it's uh, public transportation have to work. And right now it's not so easy like before the war, but uh, uh, a lot of challenges. And also a lot of refugees in our hometown, we uh, give to everyone services. Uh, regarding children, which uh, with some green card or evacuate, not Ukrainian children evacuate, not to Ukraine, to Russia, it's, uh, I can call that kidnapping. Kidnapping, it's uh, the Ukrainian citizens without his will move to Russia, it's kidnapped. It's, uh, it's prosecution case uh, against Russia. Russians uh, in this war, we see in every war have a clear rules. This war doesn't have rules if we see the old people killed, children killed, women killed, destroyed self government, kidnapped the mayors. Mayor of Gastomil bring the, the uh, medication and food to his citizen, citizens and was shoot, was killed from Russian soldier. And uh, the, the target self government right now in occupied territory and we see uh, because the self government is base is base for every uh, uh, for every country and that why is uh, target from uh, russian russian aggressors right now a lot of challenges and we very appreciate we need the help and uh, and we will be very thankful for uh, help in reconstruction our city because Mariupol totally destroyed, Kharkiv half of the city is destroyed, Chernigov uh, half of the city destroyed, Mariup uh, the uh, Erpen, Bucha, Gastomil, Baradyanka totally destroyed and, uh, and uh, a lot of bridges, infrastructure and economy of our country is destroyed with this war and we have to rebuild that slowly and without friends as we would do it very difficult thank you for your question thank you for the response president well <clears throat> from the very first moment we were next to our colleagues in uh, the border regions and municipalities of uh, with ukraine in the countries that are bordering with Ukraine and of course are the ones who are who were receiving especially in the first period most of the uh, refugees that were fleeing from this horrible war and we immediately organized the platform in order for regions and cities to know how to help how to send humanitarian aid 
So we launched an info support hub uh, to help them uh, understand how it works and how they could support the efforts uh, and support the people, uh, uh, the refugees of Ukraine in these areas. Uh, secondly, we are demanding, uh, after my visit in, uh, in these border regions, we are demanding from the European Union that the EU simplifies the way the regions and cities can access the EU funds. Uh, today, there are five EU programs that uh, money is drawn from to support uh, these efforts. So what we need is not one more fund, but what we need is a tool to facilitate mayors and governors, presidents of regions of these areas to uh, be able to absorb this money and use it to support this humanitarian crisis. And thirdly, uh, what we want is to help uh, pool expertise uh, from our cities and regions in Europe in order to be able to help Ukraine rebuild its cities. And uh, of course, we will call the European Union for allocation of more funds towards this direction. Thank you, President. We have time for a couple more questions from our online audience. And uh, I would ask if we, could, we would suggest to group these so first question uh, from Spanish television, uh, and then a second question from uh, Pascal Hansens of Agence Europe. So Spanish television, um, Talia, you have the floor for your question. Okay, thank you. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear. Okay, nice. I would like to ask to the mayor of Kiev about if he's if they are worried about the advance of the Russian troops, especially in the south, near to Mariupol city and other cities, and in the east, in Lugansk and Donetsk, and etc., near to Kharkov too. What about the, the, the advance of the Russian Thank troops? Thank you. Thanks for the question. And uh, the final question from Pascal Hansans, uh, Agence Sureau. Your question, Pascal? Yes, hello. Uh, can you hear me? We can hear you loud and clear. And uh, can you see me also? Um, OK. My first question is to Mr. Tsitsi Costas regarding this uh, facility. I would like to know if you could explain to, to us how this facility could work precisely, and if we do have former examples of such facilities by the past in order to help uh, local and regional authorities to use uh, EU funds, for instance. And then my question is to Mr. Klitschko and uh, Ms. Uh, Yeo Hava Lutsenko. Uh, did you already receive concretely money from the European Union to help you concretely on the ground already? And do you think that the help of the EU is currently enough in comparison to some other states who help you, such as the United States, and do you know how much money or mo how much help you would need to reconstruct cool. your cities? Thank you. Thanks for those questions. We'll start with, uh, with Mayor Klitschko uh, on the question of the uh, military action around uh, Ukraine and on the concrete help. Klitschko, you have the floor. Um, thank you for the question. It's, uh, right now, the active uh, phase of uh, war, and right now the battle, huge battle in uh, east of Ukraine, uh, around uh, Kharkiv, uh, and uh, uh, I'm not involved in, I'm not military, uh, uh, but I received information from military people, the Russians try to occupy the whole country. And uh, it's the uh, couple of years ago, we think the goal is Crimea, it's not. The Nes Lugansk is not. The whole Ukraine and uh, the target is still the uh, Kyiv, capital of Ukraine, because capital is symbolic status. It's heart of the country. And that's why 
That's why they try to occupy the Kyiv, with our soldiers defend our city. And right now the Russians uh, change the strategy and go uh, try to step by step occupy the east of Ukraine and uh, and uh, um, south of Ukraine. Uh, there is huge battle every day. Uh, we keep finger crossed and uh, for our soldier and uh, we help a lot and we I'm more than sure we win because I'm former fighter told you uh, it's not a matter uh, how big are you how strong are you it's much more important point is spirit and will to win it's uh, it's uh, Ukrainian soldier have huge motivation to defend the family and we win this uh, war because it's our homeland, it's our home country. And uh, we're ready to die, but never stay in the knee. We defend our country, defend our family. And regarding second question uh, uh, to spend the time um, regarding uh, reconstruction of uh, buildings. <clears throat> Uh, it's all central government, uh, uh, central government uh, uh, right now, right, uh, cal calculate uh, it's more than 800 uh, uh, billion uh, US dollar, it's whole country, um, uh, uh, because destroyed so many uh, apartments, so many buildings, uh, bridges, roads, uh, the whole economy, it's uh, we, uh, the economy of our country is destroyed. Uh, regarding uh, our hometown, more than 120 buildings was destroyed in uh, in Kyiv. Uh, uh, but uh, satellite city, uh, we not ready to calculate. It's uh, we guess is hundreds of millions US dollar. I don't know exactly. Right now we calculate, and nobody uh, ready to give. Um, uh, exactly numbers, but first priority for us, stop the war. And after that, the second step, we have to rebuild our country and we'll be very happy to make a Marshall plan uh, with our friends to make Ukraine, to rebuild Ukraine and uh, make Ukraine stronger. Strong, Ukra strong Ukraine is uh, stronger Europe and also we always was peaceful country where leads peaceful people. We never was aggressive to anyone, but right now we have to defend our country. But we still peaceful, but uh, and ready to rebuild uh, more information we have after this very important step. We win the war and after that, the second step to rebuild the economy. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I want to answer to the question uh, about this facility. First of all, I repeat that it is not a new fund that we are asking for. It is a tool, a mechanism in order to uh, make these funds available and easily accessible to mayors and governors in these border regions uh, receiving all these uh, refugees and having to deal with all these issues. Uh, in other words, under one set of rules, uh, as currently, as I said earlier in my intervention, there are five different EU programs that intervene with cases of emergency. Uh, European Regional Fund, European Social Fund, Civil Protection Aid, Food Aid, Asylum, Migration Fund. So there are many funds and what we need is an unprecedented simplification of uh, uh, effort in order to simplify the work for the funds, uh, for the people who are asking for these funds. Maybe an example can be the current uh, projects in cohesion where you apply the rules of a single leading fund to use resources of a number of different EU financial tools. We've done it already. We can copy this method. It has been done in the past in the European Union. Uh, so what is crucial now is that the Commission works with us and uh, help us because we need to, to understand that the fight that the local and regional authorities give on the ground uh, 
uh, is a fight that needs to be answered quickly. We don't have time to lose. We have to cut red tape and cut bureaucracy. And I really thank for Commissioner Ferreira for her commitment, uh, because I'm sure that uh, she will do everything in her hand to make this a possibility. Thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed. That brings to an end our conference on day 62 of the war in Ukraine. We thank our guests from Ukraine. We thank the journalists. And we also thank the uh, interpretation uh, for facilitating our work here this evening. Thanks to everyone. Thank you. Thank you.